Hello geometers, I am here to talk to you about triangle proportionality and also some other proportionality situations. This is in our unit on similarity and these are topics that are generally covered in a unit on similarity but they're not just about triangles. It's more about situations that are about proportionality and where proportionality comes into play in a way that makes it a theorem. So it, in other words, a true statement that's always going to be like this when these conditions are met. So the first one of these theorems, basically we have three, four-ish. Let's go with three. The first one's called the triangle proportionality theorem. Okay. And we also have its converse. Let's go ahead and say these are. I'm considering this one out of our three. Okay. The triangle proportionality theorem says if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, then it divides the sides into segments of proportional lengths, meaning these two segments have lengths proportional to these two segments. Okay, so if DE is parallel to AC, then BD over DA equals BE over EC. And this is something that we alluded to more than once today. This is on Friday that I'm making this video. And the converse, remember, is when you just turn it around. So in other words, if I know that BD over BA is the same ratio as BE over EC, that's a D, sorry, then that means those lines are parallel where those segments are parallel. All right, so using that information, here are some examples. Number one, find the value of x. Because I know the lines are parallel, then 14 over 12 should equal x over 15. And there's other ways I could set that up. Okay, if, it, if a proportion is true, there are lots of different ways you can set it up. I could have said 12 over 14 is 15 over x. I could have said, 14 over x equals 12 over 15. Basically, the only, any way I want to set it up that I would have the same cross product, meaning when I cross multiply, the 12 has to be multiplied times the x, and the 14 has to be multiplied times the 15. If that's true, then your proportion is valid. Okay, so like we usually do when we're trying to solve a proportion, we're going to cross multiply. So 12 times x gives me 12x equals 14 times 15, which is 210. And then I get to divide both sides by 12. And I get that x equals 17.5. And just because that's not a whole number, which is fine, I'm just going to double check myself because I did 14 times 15 on my head. Okay, just want to make sure I got it right. There we go. So that's my value of x for number one. All right, let's look at number three. We have to be careful when they give me um, a whole side over here, or maybe I'm comparing to a whole side on the other side. I got to make sure I compare things that would actually go together. Compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So I'm not going to compare 55 to 36 or to x. If I want to use the 55, which is the entire side over here, this whole length, I could have, I would have to use x plus 36, the entire length on the other side. But I don't really think I want to do that. I just want to subtract 55 minus 45 and find out that this is 10. And then I can just say x over 36 equals 10 over 45. Cross multiplying, 45x equals 360. 45 goes into 360 eight times and x is 8. All right, next up. Okay, again, I'm told that these are parallel, and I didn't mention that here, but that's why we're able to set these up. I'm told that these are parallel, so I can say 30 over x plus 7 equals 25 over 15. Or I could also do 30 over 25 equals x plus 7 over 15, or this over this, this over this. Lots of different ways I could set it up. I think I will do that way. I like to have my x on top. x plus 7 
over 30 equals 15 over 25. So when I cross multiply, that gives me 25 times all of x plus 7. So remember, you have to distribute. It's 25 times all of that. So that's 25x plus 25 times 7 is 175. And then on the other side, I've got 30 times 15. That's going to be 450. So I'm going to subtract 450. Having my face or my picture down in that corner is not very convenient. I'm going to subtract 450 minus 175 and then divide by 25. Lots of glare on the screen today. Sorry about that. That gives me 11. So X is 11. Okay, time to turn the page. Now these three questions are being asked in a slightly different way. Instead of telling me, like we did on all of these, that I had parallel sides, here and here, here and here, I'm not being told that. I'm being asked, are they parallel? So that's using the converse, finding out if these side lengths are proportional, or if these segment lengths are proportional, then that will mean that MN is parallel to JL. So I'm checking to see if 11 over 15.4 is the same as 10 over 14. To me, the easiest way to do that one's probably going to be to cross multiply. I'm going to do 11 times 14, and then the other cross product is 10 times 15.4, so I know that that's going to come out the same, 154. So yes, that is true, okay? So yes, that does mean that these are parallel. I would say yes. All right, let's look at number nine. Number nine, I have to think about what I'm doing over here because they gave me this 54, which is the entire side length from J to K. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 54 minus 24 and get that this part right here is 30. And then I can compare 30 over 24 and see if that is the same as 37.5 over 30. And I will let you finish that one. Okay, our next property that we are looking at, or our next theorem, really this is a theorem, is about parallel lines crossed by a transversal. But notice they're not just crossed by one transversal, they're crossed by a couple of transversals. This is a transversal here, and this is a transversal here. And by cutting them with two transversals, and it could be using more even, what we have is we have a bunch of little segments here that are all going to be proportional. Okay, so let's see, how are we going to phrase this? If, I don't know, I guess if all these lines are parallel, if AB is parallel to CD is parallel to EF, there's a lot of ways we could write this then what I have is some proportionality between these pieces that I've divided up those segments into, or these lines into. So I'm going to say AC, that's the length of segment AC over CE, is equal to BD over DF. Okay, and remember what I said about if a proportional, if, if a proportion is true, there are multiple ways to write it that would also be true. So let's just talk about other ways I could look at this. I could say that AC over BD, that's this part over this part, equals this part over this part. CE over DF. Another thing that you can do is you can add pieces that are proportional together and use that as if it's a piece. Here's what I mean by that. I could say that AC over AC plus CE, in other words, this whole piece, AE, is proportional to BD over BD plus DF, this whole piece. And I could take any of these proportions, I could flip them upside down and they'd still be true. I could rewrite them like sideways, this, this over this equals this over this. 
Okay, there are a lot of different ways I can work that out. All right, so let's try a few. Number 10, find the value of x, okay? I'm going to say 45 over 18 equals 52 over x. Okay, when I cross multiply that, I get 45x equals, I don't know that one off the top of my head, 52 times 18, and it's a Friday afternoon, I'm not going to do it mentally. <laughs> And I divide both sides by 45. That's probably not going to go very cleanly. That doesn't mean I can't do it, though. 20.8. So x is 20.8. Next one. This is a perfect example of what I was saying a second ago about this, where we added the two pieces together. We can use that on number 12. Now, if you wanted to, you could always subtract and figure out what this length right here is and then set it up just like number 10. But I want to show you that it works the other way too. It might be a little bit more complicated this way, but let's go ahead and try it. I can say 18 over this whole length, 18 over that entire length equals 27 over this whole length. But be careful, when you talk about this whole length, And that would go with this whole length, which is 32. Be careful that you don't call that 27x. That's not 27x. That's 27 plus x. Two pieces of segment next to each other. If I want that whole length, I add those pieces together. So this is 27 plus x. So when I cross multiply, I get this equals 32 times 27. 864, and I need to distribute, so 18 times 27, that's 486, plus 18x equals 867, subtract 486 from 867, I get 381, and no, I already had 381. 381 divided by 18 gives me 21.16 repeating. All right, I'm going to just double check that answer by doing it the other way, okay? In other words, when I first suggested that we, we could just subtract and find out this length. This length 32 minus 18, that's going to give me 14. It's going to be a simpler problem this way. So I can make sure I didn't mess it up. I just wanted to show it to you the other way because there are times when you have no choice but to do it that way, where you can't just subtract because maybe you have an algebraic expression. When I cross multiply this, I get 18x on one side and 27 times 14 on the other side. And see, I did something wrong here. I had a feeling that was a little too messy. Do you notice that here I divided 381 by 18. Here I'm dividing 378 by 18. So let's just double check. What did I do here? 18 times 27. That is correct. All right. 27 times 32. You probably saw it if I did. It's 864, not 867. So that's going to be... 378, and I bet that's going to be 21 exactly. Yep. Okay, so x is just 21. I'm glad we checked it. Okay, next, number 14. This over this equals this over this. 24 over 18 equals 3x plus 1 over 12. When I cross multiply 12 times 24, I get 288 equals 18 times. Don't forget to use parentheses. So 288 equals 18 times 3. I should know that. 
This wasn't coming to mind. And I will get 270 equals 54x x is 5. That's number 14. All right, moving on. The next page is more of exactly the same. Okay? So for this next page, it's basically front and back. It says homework 3. You're practicing on the front using this guy. And on the back, you're practicing this guy. Okay? So I want you to definitely go ahead and do, I'm going to say the odds on these. Go ahead and do the odds on these. Next, this page I really don't want to get into. Let me just give you a quick overview of what all of this says. Remember how we talked about if um, you have similarity ratio, it's a ratio of side lengths, and that the perimeter ratio would also be the same as the side length ratio. And at the time I said really any straight length ratio would be the same. Not the area ratio, not the volume ratio, but any ratio of just a length, just a straight length related to those proportional figures would be also proportional. It would have the same ratio. That applies to all this, and then we don't need to do anything with it. So let's move on, back of the page. Okay, we're going to do one problem, like what they were talking about on the front, just to give a nod to that little property. Okay, in other words, YC is a side length. It goes with 15 here. Okay. So 2x minus 9 over 15 equals these segments YM and LX are medians of those triangles. Medians are just a straight length type item. In other words, not square feet, not cubic feet, just feet. Just whatever your unit is. It's just the plane unit. We're just measuring length. So they will have the same ratio. Whatever the ratio is of the sides, that will be the ratio of these medians, 20 over x minus 5. Now, fun, fun, I picked one that is quadratic. So 2x minus 9 times x minus 5 equals 15 times 20, so that's 300. This is 2x squared minus 9x minus 10x plus 45 equals 300. When I solve that for x, for um, when I get it all on one side, when I get zero on the other side, when I move everything over here, I get 2x squared minus 19x, positive 45 minus 300 is going to be negative 255. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is going to be um, factorable. But I honestly don't feel like putting in a lot of time on it right now, so I'm just going to skip it. Because again, the only reason we were doing this problem is just to make the point that whatever your ratio of side lengths is, that's also going to be your ratio of any straight length type item, including the perimeter, including the median, including the length of the altitude, any segment that goes with that triangle. Now, this is an interesting one that we do need to talk about. The triangle angle bisector theorem. Okay, this is not what you would expect. An angle bisector in a triangle separates the opposite sides into two segments that are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. Now, when I say this is not what you would expect, maybe it is. Maybe you're different from me. But I think that if I see an angle bisector, if I know that these two are equal, that makes me want to make these two equal. But no, that's not how it works. Okay, that's not what this is saying. So I can't say, oh, look, these two angles are equal. That means these two segments are. Nope. It does make them proportional to the side that they touch, the side of the triangle that they touch. Okay, so 
AD goes with this side, AB, and DC goes with BC over here. Okay, so I could say AD to DC. AD to DC, and I'm going to color coordinate this. AD, that was not the straightest line, sorry, to DC is the same ratio as this whole side that touches AD, the side that AD joins, which is AB, to the whole side that DC joins, whole side of the triangle. So we're basically comparing, so that's BC. We're taking one side of the triangle, the angle bisector intersects it, and we're saying, okay, those two pieces are proportional to the two remaining sides of the triangle. All right, so some examples here. Number six. 4.8 goes with this one, and the X goes with this side. So in other words, 4.8 over, I could say 4.8 over 12 equals X over 18. That's one way I could set that up. I could also say 4.8 over X, this side over this side, equals this side over this side. Whichever way you see it better is really the best way to do it. So I kind of see it this way better. So I'm going to do cross multiplying and get 12x equals 18 times 4.8. That's 86.4. Let me point out something here. Remember that what I said earlier about whether your proportion and my proportion were equivalent? Okay, remember there are lots of different ways you can write a proportion and still be correct. If I write it this way and you write it this way, one way we know we're writing equivalent proportions is it's the cross product. If I multiply cross crosswise here, I'm going to get 12 times x. You're going to get 12 times x. So as long as we're multiplying the same cross products, we have equivalent proportions. Okay, so let's divide both sides by 12. And I get 7.2. So I have solve for x. All right, let's look at number eight. I would probably go ahead and subtract this. If I'm going to compare these two pieces, I'd like to know how big this piece is. So 39 minus 15 gives me 24. So now I can say 15 over 24 equals x over 36. Okay, that gives me 24x equals 15 times 36. Divide that by 24, and I get x is 22.5. Okay, number 10. Same scenario. They gave me the entire length. They didn't give me ml, but it's simple enough for me to just subtract and get it. I don't know why I'm doing it in the calculator, but I am. That's 18. So I could put this over this and say that's equal to this over this. I could say this over this is equal to this piece over this piece. There's lots of ways I can set it up. I think I'm going to do 3x minus 9 over 27. Has to be the same ratio as x plus 11 over 18. So now I have 18 times 3x minus 9 equals 27 times x plus 11. 18 times 3 is 54. I multiplied to get the same thing earlier. 9 times 18 is 162. I'm not kidding. My mental math is a little bit rusty on a Friday afternoon. Okay, multiply, uh, excuse me, subtract both sides, 27x from both sides, that gives me 27x. That's going to give me 459, I think, but I don't trust myself right now. Yep. And last but not least, that's 17. Now, Whoa, x equals 17.
That's not what I was asked for though. I was asked for length KL. So I need to remember to always check if you find a variable, x equals 17, if you find a solution to for a variable, go back and look at the problem and make sure that that's all you were needed to do or maybe see if instead you need to go back and plug it in, which I do here. 17 plus 11 is 28. And that's really my answer. Okay, last page of this packet is a lot like the other page, except this one says homework four. So this time, again, I want you to go ahead and do the odds on this one. All right, and that covers it for us. That is your whole lesson. That is your whole homework, and you guys can do that and rock it. Thanks so much. Bye.